Wait, shall we? Looks like they're roping off Moose Hill. Come on, let's go ask them. Somebody's coming. A couple of kids. Well, I'll take care of them. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi. You uh, boys live around here? Down in the valley. What are you roping off Moose Hill for? Well, we're uh, making a survey for the Balafant Realty Company. Oh, you're surveyors. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We're a couple of surveyors. I'd like to be a surveyor when I grow up. You want to be everything when you grow up, Packy. An hour ago, you wanted to be an FBI man. A man has a right to change his mind, has he? He sure has. In fact, I'm positive that Packy make a pretty good surveyor. Oh, well, partner, I got a lot of work to do before sundown. You uh, boys better run along, huh? Okay, let's go, Packy. So long. So long. Bye. Bye-bye. All we need is for those kids to get nosy. So they get nosy, so we're a couple of surveyors, like I said. By the time anybody gets wise, the job will be finished. Now, come on, let's get the job. Hey, wait a minute. I can't wait. I'm hungry. Those are surveyors. How come they didn't have any surveying equipment? How should I know? Come on, let's do a little snooping. How can a fella snoop on an empty stomach? First cut, um... Right there. Not bad. Not bad, I'll say it ain't bad. One of the richest strips of timber in the States. I don't get it. Shh. What's the matter? Plenty. Listen. Take a full gang of lumberjacks, ten days to two weeks. Another week to truck at the sawmill, it'll be three weeks in all. I'll well, just about make it by the first snowfall. Let's get back to town, make arrangements, huh? Yeah, it may take some time to round up that many lumberjacks. What were they talking about, Joey? They're gonna cut down all the trees on Moose Hill. Moose Hill? But they can't. That's where all the animals live. They'll lose their homes, they'll be possessed. You mean dispossessed? They're not the only ones. Come on, we gotta tell Jim right away. Sure gets brisk early in these days. Maybe that's because old man Winter is itching to move in. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the old man can stay right where he is. <laughs> Don't tell me a young fellow like you is afraid of a little cold weather, Pete. I ain't that young. And speaking of the young, where are them kids? Getting close to supper time. Well, they're out trying to catch our supper. I told them they could go fishing. Yeah. Well, Pete, the books show we've had the best summer in five years. Hey, it's about time. Hmm? What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean that we've had more than our share of trouble. All kinds of it. Uh, forest fires and dry spells and the herds coming down with grass fever. And now maybe we can look ahead to a little good luck for a while. Now, we've had our share of good luck. You remember that. We've been able to eat and sleep and pay our bills. We're raising a fine boy, and we're respected by our neighbors. Now, what more could you ask than that? <laughs> I guess you're right, Jim. I don't know what got into me to sound off the way it did. Blame it on old man Winter. <laughs> I'll go and get supper on the table. so terrible it's going to happen. Oh, I heard him talking. He's going to cut down all the trees on Moose Hill. Then all the animals will lose their homes. And... Oh, hang on a minute. You sound like a couple of runaway mavericks with nowhere to run. 
Now, start from the beginning. Who is going to cut the timber off Moose Hill? A man named Mr. Simmons. I heard him talking with this other man, and they said they're going to cut down all the trees on Moose Hill before the snow sets in. Are you sure you heard right? Moose Hill is government property. All I know is what I heard. And I heard this Mr. Simmons tell this other man to hire a bunch of lumberjacks to start cutting down the trees. You better call Sam Hopkins over at the ranger station. Hello, uh, get me Sam Hopkins at the forest ranger station, will you please? Hopkins speaking. Newton calling Sam. Yes, Bill, put him on. Hello, Jim, nice to hear from you. Uh, thanks. Uh, listen, Sam, do you know a man named Simmons? Yes, he represents the Bellafont Realty Company. They've been negotiating with the government to buy all the property on East Ridge. Why do you ask? Well, Joey and Packy heard this Simmons telling another man that he's going to cut all the timber off Moose Hill as soon as he can hire enough lumberjacks. Well, he can't do that. That lumber's the only protection we've got. Without cover, the entire valley will flood when the spring thaw sets in. Yeah, well, that's why I called you. I thought maybe you'd want to have a talk with this Simmons. You bet I do, Jim. I'm afraid those Bellafont Realty boys need to be reminded of our conservation problem. I'll drop by your ranch later and let you know how I came out. All right, thanks, Sam. Bye. Well, we'll find out about that soon enough. Now, in the meantime, uh, why don't you go to work on those trout? My stomach is doing nip-ups. They'll be on the table quicker than you can holler timber. <laughs> okay, wash up, you two. I'm getting here. Yeah. Hello, Jim. Pete. Hi. From the look on your face, I'd say you weren't exactly the bearer of good news. That's right, Jim. I talked to Simmons till I was blue in the face. He's going ahead with a timber cut anyway. That no good sidewinder. I'm sorry I couldn't be more helpful, Jim. But the land belongs to the Belafonte Company, and legally, Simmons can do what he wants with it. In a case like this, where people's property is in jeopardy, seems to me the law could stand a bit of interpreting. Well, you can count on me to do whatever I can. I'll get a report right off to headquarters. Thanks, Sam. And just when I thought all the bad luck was behind us. We can't let this happen. I tell you, I'm not going to stand by and have my spread washed away because of some money grubbing realty company. Now, uh, hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, this meeting was called to see what we could do about getting us out of a tough spot. You're getting your dander up isn't going to help matters. We've got to stop this man Simmons. Well, so far, we don't have any way of stopping him officially. Well, I've got an unofficial way with a double barrel shotgun. Now, you just remember that violence never settled anything. And you just remember that that timber on Moose Hill is a natural dam against spring floodwaters. You know what will happen to our ranches if those trees are cut. Yeah. 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 Three years. Oh, hold it, wait a minute. Hold it. Yeah. You all know Ben Martin. You know, he's one of the best lawyers in the state. Now, I've told him about the situation, and he thinks we have a chance of stopping Simmons legally. He's drawing up a restraining order, preventing him from cutting any trees until the courts decide the case. And what if the court decides against us? Well, whatever the outcome, we're going to abide by the law of the land. The pay is $10 a day. We supply the equipment, okay? Report here at 6 o'clock in the morning, day after tomorrow. Well, I made a deal on the power saws, the axes, and all the rest of the equipment. Did you hire all the lumberjacks you need? Yep. I had to pay them 10 bucks a day, though. They wouldn't work for any less. Now, don't argue with them, will you? West Valley Lumber Company's going to pay us top dollar on that Moose Hill timber. I figured it ought to net us uh, ten, maybe twelve thousand dollars on the deal. And I find you haggling over a few pennies with a bunch of crummy jacks. I just don't get it. Ten, maybe twelve thousand dollars. That's mm -hmm. pretty nice for just a few days' work. You know, only one thing bothers me, though. You know, there's something always bothering you. What is it this time? Well, if old man Balafon finds out we're stripping down his real estate and pocketing that timber money, we're going to be in real trouble. Well, old man Balafon is going to be so busy with his other interests, he's not going to have time to worry about a few trees on a hunk of hill. Time he finds out, we'll be living in Mexico City and living it up.
Afternoon. Afternoon. We don't need any more lumberjacks. No, I'm not a lumberjack, I'm a rancher. My name is Jim Newton. Oh, my name is Simmons. Glad to know you, Simmons. Glad to know you. This is Bruce Edwards, my associate. Mr. Edwards? Sorry I took you for lumberjack, Newton. <laughs> it's all right, there's no need to be sorry. I guess I've done enough timber cutting on my own place to qualify for a life membership in the Lumberjacks Union. <laughs> what can we do for you? You can call off that timber cut. Well, I'm sorry, but we can't oblige you, Mr. Newton. You'd be going against Mr. Balafant's orders. Well, then I don't think Mr. Balafant knows what's going on. I'm sure that nobody would deliberately cause hardship for personal gain. Newton, when a company buys property, expects to gain profit from it. Timber represents profit. It represents a lot more than that. Those trees on Moose Hill are the only thing that stand between the spring floods and every ranch in that valley. What do we care about the ranchers? Well, if you care about this. What is this? It's a temporary injunction from the Capital City District Court restraining you from cutting any timber. Well, Mr. Newton, I uh, had no way of knowing that these trees meant so much to you ranchers. Mr. Balafin is in South America on business. As soon as I contact him and explain the situation to him, I'm sure that he'll order the timber to stand on my recommendation. I was hoping you'd see it that way. Bye. Well, that does it. Newton wrapped this up with his injunction. You know, the trouble with you, Edwards, is you have no imagination. All that piece of paper can do is to wrap up a dead fish. We're going to go ahead with a timber cut. You must be kidding. Newton will have the law done on our heads. The time Newton finds out about it, we'll have Moose Hill as ball-headed as an eagle. And how are we going to keep Newton away from Moose Hill for three weeks? Well, three days is more like it. How are we going to get the job done in three days? By working night and day and offering those lumberjacks a bonus if they finish the job in time. Simmons, if I had my way about it, you'd be living in the White House. Oh, about two miles beyond Moose Hill. We're sure going a long ways just for a few measly fish. Measly? Why, the fish up there are bigger than you are. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get moving. Hey, that looked like a power saw on that truck. Yeah. Men with lots of wood chopping axes. Well, you don't think they could be heading for Moose Hill, do you? Ah, who cares? What about those fish that are bigger than me? Well, they can wait. Come on. Jim all the time. He is going to cut down the trees on Moose Hill. Why, that double-crosser. He's in contempt of Congress. I mean contempt of court. Come on, we got to tell Jim right away. You ain't going to tell anybody anything. <laughs> hey, Simmons, over here! You let go of me or you'll be sorry for the guy. No! All right, now, what's going on? These nosy kids were spying on us. They were all set to go and tell Newton what they saw. Oh. Do a thing like that, would you? Huh? Yes, we would. You're crook! Uh, Yuri! Go get him, Fury! Yuri's hurt bad. 
You ought to teach your horse better manners, kid. I'll finish him off. No, no, I'll let him go. He won't be able to last a mile. If anything happens to that horse, mister, you'll be sorry. Put him on ice. <laughs> There's a hundred dollar bonus in it for each of you if you finish this job in three days. All right, let's go, huh? Let's <laughs> get Chance, we've got to stop it. Fury's just got to make it home. Jack's nose, it sure did the trick. We're gonna have this hill leveled in no time. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna pull this thing off. There's one thing bothers me. What is it now? Those kids. We got a front row seat. We got a front row seat. The way I look at it, they're not gonna be around to see how the show ends anyway. <laughs> He strained a tendon, Pete. Better turn him out for a while. Good idea. Oh, look at that. The boys must be in trouble, Pete. Get the saddles. Easy now. the boys, Pete. And they'll hold can to tie up a couple of kids. Over here, Pete. Hurry! Get us out of here. You got a lot of talking to do, mister. Oh, Mr. Newton. Sure. Be glad to oblige you. Good 
boy, Fury. Timber cutting around here. Take him away. Yeah. You boys all right? Yeah, we're okay. Boy, that right crush you had in Mr. Simmons was a lollapalooza. If you ever want to quit ranching and going into the boxing business, you just let me know. I'll be glad to be your manager. <laughs> You put a hole through it. You can make fun of me all you want. But that's not gonna stop me from working out. Next time we come across a couple of tough guys like Simmons and Edwards, I'm gonna be ready. We can be a lot readier helping me with my chores. I wanna build up my muscles. Well, you can build muscles pitching hay. All right. <laughs> Packy picked a fight with my punch bag and forgot to duck. <laughs> 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 